Welcome <laughs> to <laughs> this <laughs> episode of <laughs> Battle of the Games. And today we have <laughs> Brass <laughs> Birmingham, a darling game, a beloved Brass Birmingham, Brass Birmingham the right, beautiful guys. baby. We're not in Bridgerton. Please stop. Brass it Birmingham. is. Should we do this entire yes. one in, with British accents? No. no. Oh, this, come on. This come on, is bro. our first and only joint video. Brass Birmingham is Kevin's Oh, you guys. Number. Explain it together. This Brass Birmingham, this brass Birmingham is Kevin's is a, is number. Sebastian's number. Two. One. It wasn't his number one. It was his number two. No, it's my number two. It's, it's his number. number. It's two. my two. Oh, is it both of our number two? Yeah. yeah. Welcome. <laughs> Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the Board and Scale podcast, Battle of the Games. Board and Scale's first ever snake video. Another vendor spotlight. That the penguin's the only one with any character. What you're likely to hatch when you mix certain genetics. You know I don't play right, 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 right. right. It is both of our number twos. Um, and in a good way, not in the other way, where she belongs in the toilet. Sorry, I'm five years old. <laughs> <laughs> but a five-year-old can't play this game, okay? So send your children home. No Brass Birmingham for them. How the pieces are too small. Did... They'll choke on what? them and die. I'm going to call Brass this out. Birmingham. Welcome to Brass Birmingham again. Oh my like I said God. before, it is Kevin and I's number two. Do you want to explain it? Do you want me to explain it? <laughs> <laughs> Brass Birmingham is a 1800s economy networking game where you are building your industrial empire uh, through the various cities <laughs> in England. Um, you're building factories, uh, textile mills, coal uh, stuff, iron uh <laughs> all sorts of things you're yeah the game is broken up into two broad periods you have a canal era and then you have a rail era they generally play the same way but the board has got certain areas where um you can only access them through canals and then later on only through uh through rails um you're upgrading your your industry tiles from uh the different eras um or the different levels uh all in an effort to try to Score the most points. Kevin is overcomplicating it. All it is is you're trying to take control of properties to make more money than everybody else. That's the only thing that matters Monopoly. in this game, okay? And there's beer in it, which is why it's my number two <laughs> favorite Monopoly. game. Monopoly. <laughs> um, no, but it's a great game. Great heavy economic game. Awesome. Do you, how we do this? Oh, start. Well, they go first, and then rock paper scissors. Or? We'll go. Oh, I'll okay. go. I'll go before you. We'll okay. just go that way and down. Go ahead, lady. You're your first. Yeah. Here's your turn. You're first. No. Come on, you go, go, go. All right. So, Brass and I have a history. That's enough. Dwayne? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Dwayne, you can go first. No, go, go, go. You can't mess up the loop. You gotta go. You messed it up, meanie. No. Hey, can you do me a favor? I'm scared. No, just give your rating. I would really Please. like to hear you. Ex okay, talk about shut it. up. Stop. Thanks. Stop. You made me cry. Um. So Brass and I have history. Um. When I first played this game, I hated it. Wanted nothing to do with it. Um. It was almost as bad as Dominant with Sebastian trying to get me to play it. I wanted nothing to do with this game. And then, I don't know what it was. I think it was we got the folded space organizer. Which yeah. just made it look better. Yeah. Um, made it easier to set up. And then it just kind of clicked. And I was like, oh, this is not as horrible as I was making it out to be. Um, maybe it was just the way I was playing the game. Maybe it was just strategy, the way I was thinking about it. I don't know what it was, but it was just there was one play. And it was just like. And I was like, oh, OK, I understand what's going on now. I know how to move forward in this game and I understand how to play it. And it's not just a waste of two hours of my time. Um, kind of play right now, to be honest. I could play right now, to be honest. Um, so after that point, I was like, okay, I would play this willingly. 
this is a game that I could put on the table, set it up, and be good with playing it and not be dragging my feet. Just muddling through. Only play it on special occasions. Um, and it it might not be the most beautiful thing in the world. It is definitely a darker game. Um, it's not the most pretty thing to look at, but it's got Roxley's. Um, that just... I don't know. Maybe that too. Getting those, getting the chips, just enhanced to the play of this game. Must be nuts. Did you call them Roxleys. That's what they are. The chips. Iron clays. The iron clays. Yeah, they're from. They're, they're made from by Roxley. Roxley's. No, I just never heard you refer to them as Roxleys before. Roxley's potato I usually chips. don't. He always does. So that's oh, why okay. I just. Must be nice to have. Them. It is so really nice. Cool. Yeah. Hey, Roxley. I'll show you the other Hurry set up. that we have for four hundred dollars. Okay. <laughs> Continue. Um, Roxley, sponsor the video. <coughs> Send chips. Um, and then, um, I don't know. You must be up. Good and then job. you were gonna give your rating. Um, I would give this game a nine. Oh, let's go. Bam, bam, bam. This is a pretty high game for me. I love this game. Right. I knew you were gonna put it on your list, mm-hmm. so I didn't need to. Yeah. Right. But is it in your top five though? Um. Honestly, if we played it enough. I feel like no, it could no, fight. No, hold on. Because I'm pretty sure you ranked several of your games in your top five lower than a nine. I did. Okay. We had not played this game in a while mm. when we did the top five ratings. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't rate Anno in my top five right now. Okay. Spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> Sorry. So it just... Yeah. It, Things have changed. No, okay, that's um, fair. And I mean, obviously, like changed now. I was just curious because, like, if you, you've like, did you make a choice not to include it because you knew that at least one other person was going to? I did a little bit, yes. Cheater. This was it was teetering. Yeah. And the games that we were consistently playing when we made the top five. Yeah. Made it in a little bit more. Yeah. Um. So. Yeah, like Dominant Species. Yeah. <laughs> it's not in my top five all the time. Never. <laughs> Never your turn, Dwayne. Fun fact, this is me and Sebastian's first game. Oh, is it the first time you guys met? And yeah. Oh, oh, I guess yeah, me too. the crew for us. Oh, technically you're right. Yeah. Technically the crew. Mm. But yeah, that oh. sucks. What a shitty, God. yeah, what a shitty game. I blame yeah. Enrique for that. That was the first, this is, so this, this, this little, this little man walked in, walked into Buck Potion little man. with this box. And I brought a big old bag. And he was Beagle like. Big bag of games. Hey guys, you want to you want to play this cool game <laughs> called what Brass a good Birmingham? Impression. No, no. He, even Enrique worse. brought en- Enrique introduced us, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, because he walks in and and he's just standing there awkwardly, <laughs> like a lost puppy dog with as, his giant bag of games. As I do. And Enrique, I was sitting with Enrique, and you were playing a game somewhere else. So he's like, "Hey, are you here to game with people?" And he bebops over. He's like, "I'm here to play." Big games. <laughs> I want to play Brass Birmingham. He actually I want no, to play. He didn't mention Brass first. The first one was Orleans. He mentioned Orleans. Yeah, and then Orleans. Brass came up. Do you know how cute this is? Because I see it from my side where mm. I'm at. I'm at home and I'm like, babe, go like, go to this. Go to the go game to that store. store that you talked about. Go the other day and because play we games we really and know. like go do it. Go like assert and play. And then you guys are like, I want to play big games. <laughs> like, that's just so and then he you. Brings, he brings these two stray dogs back home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, this was me and Sebastian's first game. Um, this was the. You have to get the Rocky I chicken say tattooed on us. Most. I think this was the heaviest game that I've played. Probably after Ark Nova. I know for sure Ark, Ark Nova is not that heavy. Anyway, at the time. Anyway, at the time. Um, anyway, I was not one for heavy games that much. This was like my introductory heavy game. And he busted it out and he started setting it up. And I was like, oh, God. Because you know me, if you've been seeing these top fives, what? Is that the Shut age up. rating? He's fucking five. <laughs> you've been seeing these top fives. <laughs> My games 
are nothing like their games. Why are you laughing like that? <laughs> it is not that funny. You fucking child. So he, go ahead. Ben. He brings it out, and it's this fucking dark <laughs> board. I can't see anything on it. It's orange and black cubes. Dwayne said, let me get my night fucking my night vision goggles. <laughs> and then he was like, hey, you want to see something cool? Turns it over and it's fucking pitch black. It's like, <laughs> oh, there, there's something there. Okay. Oh, so you started he said, it on the light he said, side. He said, how could it possibly have less color than before? <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, I was like, I will play it. I've heard about brass. I never played it before. So let's go. Um, I started playing it and I was like, yeah. This is complicated. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I have no, absolutely no idea. And then that second age kicked in. My brain expanded. I started floating. Galaxy I was like, moment. oh, I get it. It felt so good, honestly. What took me six games <laughs> took Dwayne half a game. I mean, like, I was already, I was already late. I was done. I was out of the game already. There was no chance of me coming back. But it it made sense. And I was like, this is gaming. <laughs> <laughs> um and it's it's nothing like what I play. It's it's dark, it's just money and trains and economics. And, econo- and economics. But I really like it. I was like, man. Brass, that was, that was good. This Sebastian guy ain't that bad. <laughs> maybe He's I should start a, you to the maybe first I should, game you ever played with him. Wow. Maybe I should do a podcast with him. <laughs> <laughs> um, the rest is history. But yeah, I really like Brass. It was something that I've never tried before. And now I play heavy games all the time. So I can thank Brass for that. Um, I give Brass an 8.5. I really like it. I really like it. We take it. And I think it's even better because it's nothing like in my realm. It's also nothing like anything else I've seen. I've never come across a game. Except for Branch Lancashire. Oh, sure. (laughs) Lancashire. Lancashire is definitely, obviously, just a different version of the same game. This one was streamlined. Uh, We've not gotten around to playing Nucleum yet, um, but I know people have talked about Brass Killers or whatever. But, like... Good luck. You can't beat this right? box, though, dude. I mean, so even if they're even if Nucleum does it, like, oh, congratulations, there are two games out there that do similar things. Um, number two for me, um, amazing game, um, absolutely love it. Had the very similar experience, but unlike, I was in a position the first time I played it, I was in a position to actually do what the rule book tells you to do, and they say, hey. Play the canal phase, and then stop. Put it away, and then start over. <laughs> because what you learn in that first phase is you, as you watch things develop, and you go, "Oh, okay, all right, I got this." Um, and it's literally—I mean, like you did it. You just didn't go back and reset. Um, so I was able to do that. Played it uh, with my friend Mike, and uh, we didn't play it again that weekend. And I think I took it home, and then you know I I, I I don't even remember where, who I played it with next. But then we're like, oh, we're gonna play the full version. Um, so it's literally built in there. But that's I mean, it's really all it takes for most people. Um, <laughs> but uh, what I love about that though is is that uh, like it it really is a game that the learning curve is steep. But once you get there, and once you break through that other side. Like what I what we watched Euphoria, yeah. Not only with just this game, but I've introduced this game to a handful of people who may not have been as comfortable with really complex games, and this is the breakthrough game because they can see how difficult something is. They can understand, like trying to wade through abstract concepts, how to you know connect their networks and how to you know manage these different things. And as soon as that thing clicks. When they master this game, when they get through that point, every game is accessible. There's not a game that exists that's not accessible. That was when I started winning all the games, baby. It was. Something clicked. That's what happened. Brass. Yeah. 
Man, you should have like never introduced her. <laughs> Gateway game. Get to be all you'd be winning all your games. But it is such a it's such is it is to me it is the gateway game to heavy games. Um, I just looked it up. I think it's rated a three point eight eight on the uh, the scale, which I think is 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 appropriate. But after you've played it once or twice, it's definitely. I mean, it doesn't feel like a three point eight eight anymore. Um, so um, for all those reasons and more, um, as far as like, I I don't actually, I don't think I have any critiques. Like I can't really think of any aspect of the game where I'm like, oh man, like this really Upgrade sucks. Upgrade the fucking cubes. That's a, that's an aftermarket thing, but the game wise. Yeah, I, no, I mean no, no, but that's that's no, no, no. I mean that's an honest, that's an honest critique because we spent a lot of time on this podcast with these games and <laughs> other games critiquing. The, the visual aspect. I mean, we spent like 20 minutes tearing apart Beyond the Sun because we're <laughs> like, it could be prettier, right? And I, so the, the the color, right, is very thematic, right? This game is very, very, very on point from a theme perspective. And again, they do a really good job in the, in the rule book explaining why these things matter. Like, hey, coal was used for everything, so you have to be connected to the coal. Iron was less common, so you could, you could have... More common. It was more abundant. No, it's not more abundant. Coal is more abundant. It was needed more, so you had to bring it directly to it because you needed more of it. Iron, you could bring directly to you, right? The transportation mechanisms weren't as necessary, right? So they explain, like, why these things work the way they do and and, and whatnot. Uh, So thematically it works, and I think the aesthetic of the game fits with that theme very well. Um, so while I get that it's a bit drab and, and the, like, if you're like, have a problem with color washes, you, you may not really enjoy that. Uh, but I do think it works. They can give me real coal. <laughs> little lumps of coal would be perfectly <laughs> fine. Little chunks of coal would work. Um, you could put little iron cubes, like iron ingots, ingots. You could absolutely do that. I, I think that's an easy aftermarket upgrade or something they could do in it. Um, that's not a very good critique. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, that's 100%. That's all I want. I'm just saying, like, if, if there would be any way to, like, upgrade the tiles or whatever to, like, 3D buildings or something like that, but I don't think that would become probably too, too much. much. Um, so. No, you go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, that being said, so I really, again, I don't have any actual, like, substantive critiques. Um, so for me, despite being my number two, and if you watch all these, you understand why. Uh, this is actually a this is a ten. Spoiler alert! I'm right there with you. Wow! That's that. This game is an absolute perfect ten for me. Probably since the first time I've played it, I was like, I just want to play this more. The most annoying thing was set up, and now with the folded space organizer, that's all gone. And the game itself, perfect. Like Kevin said, I have zero critiques. I've lost this game horribly. I've won this game barely. And each and every time was a completely different game to play. Barely. And honestly, all Beer of barely. the variants, <laughs> all of the variants of the game is in the hand of cards that you have at any given time. And the decision space that you have to make with those cards based on what is currently going on. And the fact that you have to think about, if I do this now, I can, if I only spend this amount of money to do this, to put this out, then that means only this one person is connected to this market. And I'll be able to do this other thing based on the turn order change before anyone else can connect and steal it from me. And just stuff like that. The, that's like the player interaction that I want to think about of like where you're not really directly like punching someone, right? But you're just like swooping in right under or setting yourself up, you know, and trying to deal with the people around you. I think that's cool. But when you're taking stuff from other people, you're also helping them, mm-hmm. right? So like you are, people, yeah. when they're placing their buildings and putting stuff that they need on top of them, when those things come off of it, they flip a building and they gain things from that, right? They gain income and then they need, and then, and then they gain points in between rounds. 
And so when, yes, you're taking stuff, but you're also giving them income points, mm-hmm. which income happens multiple times throughout an era. Um, so you're giving them more income as that goes. So yes, you may have inconvenienced them slightly, but like it's still a plus for them. So yes, like you said, a little bit of a, Hey, I messed up your next yeah, turn. Someone but takes your stuff, but you're like, here. thanks until they come for your beer barrels in the last round. The beer like, barrels. Oh, I needed that to sell. Yeah, the beer barrels can be, yes. but that's why there's the mechanic of you can build beer wherever and use it from wherever. Other people have to be connected. I think that's purposefully I, for that. They, again, those 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 pieces of it are are really well done. That allow you like the economic piece really shines because like again, it's not conflict as in again like I'm punching you in the face or whatever. It's this kind of sly like hey. Like I'm, I'm drinking your beer, right? I'm using your stuff. I'm, you know, you're gonna benefit from it, but I'm really benefiting from it. You know, it's really funny that I just thought about. Mm. Why is it? Why doesn't it take beer to create buildings? Uh, because you're paying. It's it's how your 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 workers. workers. Yeah. yeah. It's just drinking instead of giving them money, there. you just yeah. get them drunk as shit. Hammer in the building. Also, well, well, no, because again, so you're not building the buildings with that. The times I, that you use beer, I get it, Kev. Is when you want to build two railways at one time. That's exhausting work. You gotta I get relax it. them. You gotta relax them. Yeah. I, I want to say it. also, color palette, not for me. Originally, I liked. Well, actually, originally when we around the time we bought this, I was buying dragon games, fire, magic, all that stuff. And I saw this cu- this box, and I was like, "Whoa, is that like a dragon's body or something?" Because <laughs> I don't know if you can Until see Until recently, this. he Until thought that recently, was dragon scales. I actually just now noticed that there's a lady in the reflection here. It's her cobblestones. I don't think I've ever noticed her until like the last time we played this game. The hell? Cobblestones. I don't think I've noticed that either. That's a lady. When did she show up? That's a lady. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lady on the cover, if you didn't know this. But when I just saw this out of the corner of my eye, I thought this was dragon scales. And I go, whoa, what's that? And she's on the corner, too. Picked it up. Raspberry, what is this? Oh, dude, what is this? It's just, and something about the color palette, even though the color palette is just basically black and gray, it just is so attractive to me, the way that they did it on this box and the way the back of the game looks like. You don't get any detail of the game from this. (laughs) You see a couple of... It's nothing. We bought it. We bought it, and I have not regretted it. And I'm glad that I saw this and not Lancashire first because... Who knows if I would have given this a chance if I had played Lancashire first. I know that they're not very different, but they are different. So. There is only one other box that is dark like this that has drawn me in. Do you know what it is? One second. Oh, sorry. You're right. This will, for me, be a 10. It will probably remain a 10 and in my top five for a long time. Forever. Yeah. And that's press. Did you want your thing to be in the video? It doesn't have to do. Okay. Well... Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Battle of the Games review for Brass Birmingham. And if you like this video and you want to see more, like and subscribe and go check out the other Battle of the Games videos so you can catch up. And if not, you can see this game again (laughs) in the rankings video. Bye.